Hey, Cadence. Oh, what is that awful smell? It's terrible. <laughs> well, I don't have a nose, so I couldn't tell. But that's probably my fault. My bad. <laughs> well, that's one of the senses. I guess we should learn about all of them. Sorry, I didn't even feel it come out. Ew. <laughs> Your senses allow you to learn, protect yourself, and enjoy the world. If one sense is not working correctly, then other senses will take over or become stronger and make up for the lost sense. The five main senses are touch, taste, sight, smell, and hearing. Our brains allow us to figure out what each of these means. Then these sensors are carried from special nerve cells called neurons to the brain. There are two types of receptors, depending on which sense, general receptors and special receptors. Big words, but don't worry, we'll figure out what they mean. General receptors are present in the skin and muscles. Special receptors are photoreceptors that are in the eyes, chemoreceptors in the mouth and nose, and mechanoreceptors in the ears. Let's begin with the sense of smell. I already helped with that earlier. <laughs> yeah, you did, Gus, and it wasn't appreciated by anybody. But your nose is the organ that we all use to smell. We can breathe through two holes called nostrils. Your nose is called an olfactory organ. The inside of the nose is lined with mucous membranes. And these membranes have smell receptors attached to a special nerve named the olfactory nerve. Smells are made of fumes of different things. And the smell receptors react when the molecules of these fumes, and then they send this information to the brain. And our sense of smell is able to recognize seven types of sensations. Most people can tell the difference between 4,000 to 10,000 different smells. As people get older, their sense of smell declines. Dude, good thing your grandparents weren't here earlier when I did that little poop. The sense of smell is usually lost temporarily when a person has a cold. The sense of smell also affects our taste, which we will learn about more a little bit later. Now let's discuss the sense of sight, and you'll see how important sight is in just a few moments. Your sense of sight is all because of your eyes. A lens at the front of your eyeball helps to focus images onto the retina at the back of your eye. The what? It's called the retina, not the retina. The retina! Oh, my bad. Yeah, again. The retina has two types of light-sensitive cells. They are the cones and the rods. The cones allow us to see color, and the rods allow us to see better at night, and also help with our peripheral vision. And all of this information is sent to the brain along the optic nerve. This fact is really cool. Hey, guess what? Did you know the images transmitted are actually upside down? And your brain makes sense of what it sees by turning the image right side up. And having two eyes helps us to judge depth. The brain also uses the images to create a 3D or three-dimensional image as well. The pupil is the dark dot in the middle of the eye we can see. Ow! It allows light to enter the eye. Fingers, apparently. Ouch! When it is very bright, the pupil in our eye gets smaller. And when it is dark, the pupil gets larger, which allows more light to enter. People have different color eyes. They can be brown, blue, green, 
hazel, and other mixes of colors. This is called the iris. The iris is a muscle that adjusts the size of the pupil when needed. And the cornea is the clear protective coating on the eye, and the white part of the eye is called the sclera. Eyelids help protect and clean your eyes. Here is a sense of touch. <laughs> Let's go. Three, two, I can't. <laughs> go. Where is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking. Well, that didn't work out so well, but now we know how important sight is, so we should also learn about the sense of touch. And our skin is the largest organ covering the entire body, and skin can feel pressure, moisture, temperature, vibration, and pain. The sense of touch happens with neural receptors in the skin and other surfaces like the tongue blah, 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 and hair follicles. I don't have skin though. Mm. And skin receptors create an impulse that is carried to the spinal cord, then to the brain. And there are also touch sensors that do not send data directly to the brain. These touch sensors are called reflexes. And reflexes send information right to muscles to help protect the body. Only after the muscles react is when that information is then sent to the brain. So what do you think of the video so far? It's really good. Who we'll put salt in my coffee again? Guys, I told you to put sugar, not salt. Well, why do they look so much the same? I don't know. And that was a pretty big mistake because salt in coffee would taste really bad. And our sense of taste comes from taste buds on your tongue. And these buds are also called papillae. In between the papillae are your taste buds. People have around 8,000 taste buds on their tongue. Wow, that's a lot of taste buds. How many, how many, how many do you think I have? Well, some. Some? I'm good, well, now, now I'm, now. <laughs> the tongue is only able to taste four separate flavors. Salty, sweet, sour, and bitter. The different types of taste buds are located on different areas of the tongue. Sweet taste buds are located at the front of the tongue. Sour taste buds are on the sides. Salty taste buds are at the front and sides, and bitter taste buds are at the back of your tongue. To detect taste, 
the brain uses about 20% of the information from the taste buds and about 80% from smell receptors. Wondering how foods taste different if there are only four flavors? Well, candy may be a combination of sweet and salty. Chocolate chips in a cookie could be a blend of sweet and bitter. Everything you taste is one or more combinations of these four flavors. And your tongue also understands the texture and temperature in food like creamy, crunchy, hot, or dry. Your tongue is one of the strongest muscles in your body, and it can heal from injury much faster than other parts of your body, which is good because I'm constantly biting my tongue. <laughs> and we also need our tongue to create certain sounds when we talk. Hey Quinn, what's our next sense gonna be about? I think it's gonna be... Oh. Oh. Our ears are made with two separate parts, the outer ear and the inner ear. The outer ear is made of cartilage and skin, and this is the part that people can actually see. And it works kind of like a cup to catch the sounds traveling past our heads. The eardrum is inside your middle ear and converts sound waves to vibrations. The middle ear also includes the three smallest bones in the human body, and these bones are the malleus, incus, and stapes. Next, sound moves to the tympanic membrane and then to the inner ear. The inner ear is also called the cochlea. It's a spiral-shaped tube which turns vibrations into sounds and sends that message to your brain through your auditory nerve. And the inner ear is where vibrations from the middle ear are converted to electrical impulses that are then transferred to the brain. And then the brain uses the sounds from both ears to determine the distance and directions of sounds. Hey, guess what? Now you know all about the five senses. I'm sorry about earlier, girls. You should be. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe.